Hello, good morning, good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, everything in between, from outside. How are we all? I did put in a shower and chat, but nobody's nobody's given us a wave yet, so feeling a bit lonely. And was, well, I say that, got a bug on my neck. <coughs> Classic wait for somebody to say hi. Oh, I've lost my mouse. That's not good. There we go. It's back. It's back. Don't nobody panic. We've got some music this week. I actually can't hear it myself, so uh, you'll have to let me know if it gets annoying, if it's too loud. Uh, we've gone for a chill station. Thanks to Sean for bringing some stream knowledge to the streams. Today we will be looking at Statamic, as the website says, beautiful, easy to manage websites. Um, genuinely an absolute dream to build websites now for days. Um, so much so that I don't actually do it that much anymore because it's just not that much of a challenge. <laughs> so uh, I haven't actually built uh, a site so far this year, I think I've been building software. So uh, you'll have to excuse me. But we will be taking a dive into Statamic. Um, I've done, um, for my sins, a lot of uh, websites with Statamic V2, um, which was the predecessor to what we'll be looking at, obviously, today, with it being Statamic 3. Everyone knows how version numbers work. Um, there is a big, 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 monumental, huge, massive change between 2 and 3. And that change is fairly foundational, but it doesn't change much of how you use actual Statamic itself. Um, it just makes it a hell of a lot better. Um, so now we're in Statamic 2 land. Um, as I have said, this is based on Laravel. It's a Laravel CMS um, in Statamic 2 land. Um, this came as a pre Pre-shipped, it shipped with it shipped with Laravel. Uh, I think it was 5.2, even been 5.1. Um, so a fairly old version of Laravel, and that was up until um, something last this year, March. So we have Statamic 3 now. Uh, Statamic 3 has been effectively rewritten from the ground up. Um, it now um, is built as a for Laravel so it will ship independent of Laravel um, you can either use the uh, like Statamic installer which will give you Laravel and Statamic or kind of pre-configured out of the box uh, or if you've already got a Laravel app this is what they're fond of them, so if you've already got a Laravel app you can just add Statamic so if you've got a piece of software is often what I'm building these days. Um, a piece of software, and you want to add a marketing website to it, or you want to add content management to it, you can now with um, well, incredible ease. And the other amazing part of it being a Laravel package, or Laravel plugin, um, is that uh, you can make use of everything you would have previously made use of with Laravel within Statamic. So um, if you want to build a website first and then you'd like to strap on some, uh, some kind of subscription area or some kind of application logic onto your website, you aren't having to kind of crowbar it into a website, you aren't crowbarring it into a CMS, you can just add it to Laravel um, and then call in Call out, etc., etc., from Statanic. So, who amongst you has? It's very quiet. I'm going to ask this question anyway. But who amongst you has ever used? Ah, okay. There we go. Thank you. I'm a little quiet in relation to the music. Let me um, drop down the music a little bit. and speak. Is that any better? Morning Richard, by the way. God, my 
fans are going crazy. So it was a bit of a struggle to run OBS and Chrome and Docker <laughs> and Sublime last time. This time we've added Pretzel. And of course there is no Linux app. So it is just in a Chrome window. And I think it's using about 30% of the CPU to broadcast some music to the channel. So I might have to have a look for an alternative. Perhaps I'll just download a load of royalty free music and stick it on VLC. That was going to be my tact, but I ran out of time. I ran out of time. And also downloading, yeah, downloading music. Don't know where to get it from. Don't know whether there's some kind of special setup between Pretzel and YouTube that makes it not get DMCA'd or whatever. I don't know. No idea. Awesome. Morning, Rich. Yep. Thank you. Much better. Much better. All right. All right. How is the music? It's on the chill station. I guess you're listening to something called So This Is Goodbye. I cannot hear it, like I say. So if it gets annoying, let me know. I will change it. Um, we should probably make our own little Nordev station. I think you can make like a playlist and stuff on this. I'm not sure. Shall have to, shall have to look into it. Anyway, back to, I'm not going to spend this first part speed chatting for the first two hours this time. I've learned my lesson, although to be honest, like I say, a uh, bit, the title of the, the talk is building websites has become too easy because it kind of has. Um, so I don't know whether or not we've got enough content to fill eight hours to quote Frank. But um, if we don't, I'm sure we can slip on some bonus stuff at the end. Um, the plan is uh, to clone uh, the Norfolk developers, new Norfolk developers website. So I don't know if you've seen this already. Let's make it a bit bigger. And um, we've got a new, the new Norfolk Developers website's replaced WordPress, woo! Um, <laughs> it isn't Statanic, it is Next.js, um, started by Sean, um, and then helped out by a bunch of uh, contributors from, um, from Nordev. So if we, it's all public, open source, whatever the word is for it. But yeah, look, look at these fabulous contributors. Um, have I either made it better or fixed problems or added things? It's been good, it's been good. So yeah, um, I don't know why the production is pending. <laughs> I guess we'll ask Sean about that. <laughs> 22 days ago. <laughs> yeah. Is it actually deployed? Is the link fixed? Has it been fixed? I don't know. Go and find out. Where is it? It's on this one, I think. Oh, quick. Ah, uh, Friday's meeting day. Sorry, Sean. Hey, Sean. Meeting day. What does meeting day mean? That's uh, that's yeah, scary. Just noticed the stream is really far behind. So I'm gonna see if we can make that a little bit better. And there is a stream setting somewhere around here. Ah, oh, I can't change it after I've gone live. That is so annoying. Okay, so the stream is a good few minutes behind. That is horrendous. Uh, okay, yeah, anyway, in uh, this, if you want to come share, talk to us about the stuff you build, uh, or how you build it, and what you use to build it, check out the new website, check out the latest post on there, introducing what the stack. We've got two people signed up. I need a third person, a third company, to say, yes, we would like to come and speak to you about how we build stuff. So is this link going to work? Oh, it does. Okay, curious. So maybe that has been deployed. No idea. Sean, have you any idea why this is showing as pending 22 days later, now that you're here? <laughs> anyway, um, Statamic, awesome. We're going to rebuild uh, the North Developers website and have some fun on the, on the way. Um, like I say, version three is just out unfortunately so one of the awesome parts about the laravel community the php community is the documentation the documentation is always pretty good um oh must be your fault oh uh, yeah okay yeah if 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 get sorry sean's just said that the deployment process is, uh, the deployment failing is my fault it's obviously like git commit author equals alex yeah maybe later <laughs> it looks like it's actually deployed. That that link was right. 
So I guess it's deployed and forgot to update GitHub. I don't know. Uh, awesome. Anyway, right? Yeah. Well, like I was saying, the documentation in the Laravel community and the PHP community is absolutely freaking awesome. There is one caveat to that, and apparently is the new Stamic three documentation. I've got to. It's got to be said that the documentation is a little lacking at the moment. Um, which is unfortunate. Uh, it's also in struggling to get indexed, um, which is again quite unfortunate. Um, hopefully they'll improve the situation. The all of this, or ev everything you see today, is I believe open source. You will need to license it. Um, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but yeah, everything you see is up on the GitHubs under the Statamic branch here. So we've got the CMS that we will install shortly. We have the docs, which is itself a Statamic site. We've also got the migrator, which will take you from two to three, quite obviously. And there's another repo in here that I will hopefully you will get to play with and it is the SSG package um, so you can take your built Statamic 3 site uh, your finished final product and I'll run it through Statamic SSG which will uh, render it to a static site so it'll turn it into HTML that you can chuck on a CDN somewhere um, and forget about it I guess that was probably the wrong word. You wouldn't forget about it, but you know what I mean. But yeah, we will play with this package. I've run it uh, once. It worked straight out of the box. It blew my mind. Uh, so hopefully it will do exactly the same uh, when we do it later along the line. Maybe that will be part of our bonuses towards the end. So yeah, Statamic is now open source. Statamic 2, the crutch was that there was no open source stuff, so you couldn't pull requests or do anything. It was via a, um, a V2 issues branch or V2 issues um, repo. So they, uh, it's probably still hanging about somewhere. Um, but yeah, all open source, all open now. Um, what I mean by licensing is, um, Hopefully on this page. Here we go. Building sites for yourself. <laughs> it is meetings day at Superpass Office. Sorry, guys. Didn't realize. When's your next one? And if I DM Juliana, can we get it organized? Reorganized. <laughs> Just realized it's going to take you at least two minutes to hear me say that. So I'm going to carry on talking about the pricing. Uh, pricing, you need a license, basically. If you're building it for yourself, a friend, or a hobby site, then you can use the basic version of Statamic for free. If you're not, you need to buy a license. It is $259. For some reason, where is... Oh, here we go. There's a better product. There's a better pricing page somewhere around here. Here we go. Um, so for solo and for free, this is kind of your main crutch. Basically, you can only have one admin user account. You don't get multiple users. You also don't get the Git integration stuff, which we'll talk about as we go along, as we get to it. The multi-site revisions and drafts, etc., etc. So basically, you get a kind of a strimmed down version of Statamic. Um, it's perfectly adequate for building uh, this, yeah, your own personal sites and even sites to a certain extent where they'll share share a login. Um, so uh, yeah. Anyway, like I say, I'm going to stop talking about it because oh, there's by the way, this LAN as well includes five Stamic Pro licenses and is surrounded by what looks to be a Zelda thing. Anyway, uh, cool. We're going to. Stop talking, stop chatting. I'm going to get over my nerves and just crack on, get straight into it. So like I say, devs documentation is a little bit lacking, but the core stuff is in there and there's quite a few jokes. So that's good. So building a Satamic site is 
pretty routine. There's two ways, like I say, that you could potentially start with it. You could bring it into an existing Laravel package, or you can use um, the template boilerplate to um, scaffold out a Laravel app for you, and at the same time, a Statamic app. So we're going to use that and as per usual we are going to be using the composer create project command um, we will prefer distribution we need to point it at the generator and that is the statamic slash statamic generator and then we need to give it a name uh, we are going to rebuild the norda website so let's call it norda website oops i can't type statamic I cannot type at all, what's going wrong? All right, so all that takes about two hours to run. Let me just make sure it actually kicks off. And there we go, off it goes. So that will create and scaffold out as a project in the directory by the same name as the um, project. So I'll just get created now. I'm going to be using uh, Docker again to get this uh, hosted and running. Um, our old friend Loris, uh, his Docker image for uh, Laravel obviously works perfectly fine for Statamic. There is a few dependencies that we'll need to add to that image uh, because he doesn't ship with uh, image optimizers. Um, however, Laravel fairly gracefully handles that sort of stuff. So if you've got things like, um, what's it called, OptiPNG, FFmpeg, um, well actually FFmpegs are not a good example, but any of the um, image optimization packages, including like SVG Go or SVG Optimize or whatever it's called, uh, if they're installed, it will try and use them. If they're not, it will not, and it will not do any um, optimization of your images for you. Um, so uh, if you install it, it looks a bit like, yeah, it works, <laughs> obviously. But you won't get any errors about it, which is a little bit annoying sometimes. Um, it's a similar state of affairs with Laravel sometimes. Um, there'll be an extra package or something that you need to install. Uh, to get something to, to kick off, otherwise it kind of just gracefully ignores it, which is um, not fun. But anyway, here we go. I have not, by the way, downloaded the new version of Composer yet. I think I need to update my um, Docker image. I'm pretty sure it's got... Pretty sure the new Docker image has got the new Composer version 2 in it, which is why I am getting it series downloads and why it's going to take about two hours <laughs> it's not going to take two hours but it's going to take a while um so i mean i haven't done much but is there any questions at this stage yet? who's with us as well we've got kev sean rich i'm seeing seven people five people it just changed <laughs> Five people on the uh, on the stream. Who else is with us? Identify yourselves. I'll sit here and wait for this. I should have probably zoomed this in, actually. Uh, is it control plus? There we go. Oh, just at the right time. Just as it finishes. Awesome. All right. So, we have our basic website. Pop into Nordev website Statamic. Oh, Christ. My fan is right next to my enter key, which is slowly getting warmer and warmer. All right. Um, here we have our, what you'll recognize potentially as a Laravel app. So we've got our app directory, bootstrap directory, convo, what's this content directory? Database, uh, public resources, roots, all of these things are Laravel and just slipped in there, we've got our content directory. Put kettle on moment. <laughs> I think that means it's going to put the kettle on. 
Kev's going to put the cake. I'll I'll take another coffee. <laughs> I don't have a, a thermos or anything like Sean. Not set up. I've I've got my backup water. <laughs> when I say water, I'm holding up a squash. But I've got my backup water and I've got some coffee. We're good. We're good to go. Right. So I'm going to open this project in Sublime. Hopefully that is nice and big. Thanks to Hamza for the UI scaling tip. That's really helpful. It means I don't have to change about five different keys every time I want to go streaming. Just increase the UI scaling and we're off. All right, so uh, what I do, this is cheeky to be honest. There's a little GitHub directory in here that's got the funding uh, link in it, which sets up the, um, uh, yeah, it sets up the, the GitHub funding thing. So just uh, delete that. All right, so yeah, we've got a basic default Laravel app here um, within which you will get a content directory and this is your flat file CMS for Statamic. So out of the box, we have a basic collection and pretty much nothing else. Um, we will touch upon these. I keep saying that we'll touch upon these as we get to them. Obviously, we're going to get to collections pretty quickly. But first things first, I need some way of running it. Need to be able to host it. Um, so we need a Docker image. So let's get started on that. Um, now for this project, uh, we only need one container. There is no database, there is no Redis, there is no anything else other than a PHP server. So we'll create a basic Docker file within which we will import from uh, Loris uh, our classic usual Docker file. So uh, we'll be, there we go. Laris Schlever, Laravel Docker PHP 7.4. So that's what we'll use um, out of the box. Now, Laravel Docker ships with Xdebug setup. Um, if you saw um, the Nordev event from a few weeks ago, um, taught how to use Xdebug and how to get it set up, um, do refer to that. If you'd like to get XD debug set up, it's very handy for uh, within Laravel world. Um, although I've come across something else recently, something called uh, Laravel Telescope that I'm keen to try out. But anyway, the Laravel Docker image uh, ships with the XD debug pre-installed. It will slow stuff down, so I usually remove it because I quite honestly have never been able to get it running, even after that uh, the episode last week or a few weeks ago, I still cannot get Xdebug to connect. It's um, it's the Docker, it's the, the use of Docker in, and um, on a Linux machine that's, that's, that's really getting me. Anyway, we will increase our max file size and our max post size so that we can get some nice large assets in there. I think it ships out of the box with 10 megs, um, that Laura Schleber Laravel Docker image. So we'll just echo uh, this is just creating a new file, in effect. So if you'd like to set up any um, additional PHP innies, um, car, pop a file in the user, local, etc. PHP conf.d slash whatever you want dot innie. So we're going to call it statamic dot innie. And it's going to just pop in these two lines. We've got a slash n here, which is interpreted by a dash e, which will make turn this into upload max file size 128 megs and the next line post max size equals 256 megs so that we have a, a fairly decent setup from there. Um, one thing that doesn't come in the image as well is, well it does, but I will we'll change it. I'll show you why in a minute. We need to create the composer cache um, folder and make it writable by any user because the next line we're going to call now this is fairly unique to Linux um, this will ensure that the um, docker user is the same as my own user 1000 1000 is my UID for my user on my Linux machine which will ensure that all files that are created will be created with my user 
uh, so I'll have access to them. Um, that is, I think, fairly unique to, to, to a Linux setup. Uh, you won't need that on Mac or Windows, I think, but don't quote me on that. Finally, we need, or not finally, but we'll need to expose a port. That will be 3000 for our sakes. We will tell Composer, uh, the package manager, to use as much memory as it sees fit. Negative one for an unlimited memory. It will just basically run um, a command before it kicks off to enable PHP to basically give it unlimited memory. And then actually, finally, this is our command that we need to use to serve up the app. And we're going to use php alazan serve. And we're going to tell it that it needs to host it on its public interface. And that it needs to be on port 3000. That is our Docker file done. With some luck. This will uh, get us going, get us hosted. So back to the terminal. We first of all need to build it. Um, so we'll take our instructions from our Docker file and we'll all build it. Um, Docker dot build, uh, Docker, <laughs> Docker build dot will build the uh, Docker file in the current directory the, with its current context. Uh, we are going to tag it. So we want to do dash T and we'll tag it as Statamic so that we can use it a few more times. It might complain that I've already got them. It shouldn't do. There we go. Fantastic. So that image is built uh, <clears throat> and we are good to go. So the next part in our quest is to launch a uh, container using that image um, and mounting our current directory, our local directory into that image in the var ww. So like I say, we don't need Docker Compose. It might be a hell of a lot easier if you're not used to Docker to use Docker Compose just because it provides you a little bit, it can be a little bit easier to get up and running with. Um, you do not have to run, for example, this crazy command here. So Docker run, uh, daemonize, and I don't know what the P is, if I'm honest. Nope. Guesses in the, guesses in, the uh, in chat? No idea what capital P does. Uh, dash V is for our volume. So we're going to say the present working directory, this directory should be mapped to var ww in our Docker image. We're then going to give it a name so that we can refer to that um, when we issue commands, if we want to issue commands or shut it down, for example. And again, we're going to use a value from our current directory and we're going to use the base name of our pwd, our present working directory. Um, now, if I just bring up a new terminal, and issue that command, possibly, there we go, uh, $pwd, it's going to print us out Alex, uh, because pwd is home slash Alex, I'm in my home directory at the moment, so P, uh, base name will grab you the folder directory. So this is a pretty handy little, when I've got autocomplete on, which I've turned off for today, uh, first of the stream, because it's really annoying. <laughs> um, and it, yeah, it, it, it interrupts. You can't really tell whether or not autocomplete is happening on the YouTube. But anyway, when autocomplete is on, all of this gets autocomplete for me. Um, and it's quite handy for being able to have a fairly generic command that you can use uh, for any of your um, projects. So this one right here will take any local, if I'm in a directory, will boot it up into our Statamic image that we've already built. You do not have to keep this Docker file in this project. If you were to create your own Docker file and you weren't lazy like myself, um, you could publish this Docker file to Docker Hub, and then you could just pull down your Docker Hub version of that image. This Docker file is in almost all of my projects now. And every so often I get, I slightly update it. And then uh, I go to another project and I'm like, why is it? For example, this one. Uh, this is a new addition to the my Docker file. And uh, every so often we go to another project, and I'm like, why is Composer running out of memory? Anyway, I accidentally hit enter to get us in line there, but it actually ran the command. So what we've done here is it's kicked up that image with that volume, called it this. 
So if we go Docker PS, oh crumbs. You didn't see that. Uh, bear with. <laughs> I knew I should have shut down my laptop, give my laptop a quick reboot before I <laughs> kicked off the stream today. Shut down those extra images. Okay. Now, Docker PS, we can see that our Nordev website's Totemic image is running. It's been up 50 seconds. It is mapping uh, 32768 to 3000 at the moment. So if you don't provide um, in that up in that up command here, excuse me, in this command, if you don't map that free port 3000, then it's going to give you one. Um, I quite like that, to be honest, because it will avoid other Docker images. Um, so if I boot up another one, it will be 32769. And for some reason, it always picks 32768 as its first number. I have no idea why. And then it will just keep going up until uh, until some start relinquishing and it goes around again. So anyway, our Docker image is running, as we just saw with the Docker PS. I don't know why I'm running again. Um, like I say, with this uh, base name, what that allows us to do is exec against our um, image that has been called um, whatever the base name of this directory is, which makes this a hell of a lot easier. So now I can run commands against the Docker image. For example, PHP Artisan, which will bring up our Laravel um, Helper, Laravel, Clee, Clam Line Helper thing. Does it have a name? It doesn't have a name. It's called Artisan. Um, in here, there are a bunch of new Statamic commands. Now, again, we've moved from V2 to V3. And in so doing, integrated a bit more with Laravel. Um, in old version 2, when it shipped with its own copy of Laravel, it ships with a command called please, which I really like. Um, so they renamed Artisan to be please. PHP, please do something. And I think it's absolutely phenomenal. It's fantastic. I love running the PHP please command. However, it is probably going to die a death very slowly. Um, I, as far as I understand, all of these exist under Artisan. They didn't initially, but they should do now. Yeah. So we've got pretty much, I can't spot any missing ones in there, but um, everything just prefaced with Statamic colon. So now you've got choice, basically. You can use the old PHP please, or you can use the newer PHP artisan. Um, and this is where you start to create, you can start using the generators. So making actions, add-ons, field types, filters, modifiers, tags, users, which is quite important. We'll be using that in a moment, um, etc. So let's go and have a look. It should be running on, oh, lolcat, no. I don't know why I always do that, I swear. Localhost 32768. There it is. Just more, I'll whack it up to 150%. So, basic install, you get a homepage, the links out to our control panel documentation on getting support. Um, we've already got the documentation panel up, so we'll load up our control panel, which should be at, yep, slash CP. Uh, so you can change that. That is your uh, admin route. You get to this incredibly pretty page. Uh, Log in, obviously. So we will need to create our user, which is why I pointed that out a moment ago. So we'll again use our PHP artisan. Going to get issue statamic colon make on use it, hit enter. It's gonna start prompting you for your requirements. So pop my email in, pop my name in, and pop my password in. Do I wanna be a super user? I certainly do. Excellent. Now, Satanic will use um, flat file users out of the box. So down here, we have our users folder 
we have an alex at alexscotton.com.yaml file within which you will find our user record. Now, this has changed in version three now. You can use, so if you install, there's two, like I said earlier, two ways of installing Systemic. If you install it the way I have done today, um, using the installer, using the template, uh, you will get flat file users. If you install Statamic into an existing Laravel app, you will not get flat file users. It will assume you are using the inbuilt Laravel users. That is something to be very aware of. Uh, so if you're looking to, I mean, it's assumed that you've already got that user system. So if you're looking to continue to use it, it will continue to use it. Um, there is a guide on the Statamic Dev uh, site for either converting your Laravel app to use the Statamic users, so a flat file user system, uh, or to swap out Statamic as flat file user system to use the Laravel system and therefore use any of the available Laravel providers. So you could provide a Google uh, OAuth login. Um, you could provide pretty much any login via any service you wished because once you've unlocked Laravel users, you've unlocked somewhat unlimited providers. Um, I've used it to sign into Weibo <laughs> before. So uh, yeah, the providers are, um, there's a lot of them. Anyway, so we now have a user, so I can log in. We can see, our, oh, excuse me. Should probably turn off um, one password. Can I turn off one password temporarily? Does anyone know? Right, disable it or something. Um, I guess if we just lock it, that'll do. All right. So on pon first login, you'll get breeded by the dashboard. And it will walk you through it. Everything with Instatamic will walk you through it. So it holds your hand. Um, one thing we will talk about uh, is pro mode um, or enabling pro mode. So as I said, out of the box, you can have this for free now. Didn't used to be able to in Statamic 2 World. Uh, it was a little cheaper, but uh, Statamic 3 is now um, has a free mode. If you like, you can enable pro mode, which is basically just adding a config variable, and it will convert the site into a pro mode, and then it will drop a little disclaimer at the bottom to say that you're in pro mode, but you do not have the license to support it. You can run uh, in pro mode on a local host directory, and you can also enable pro mode on any uh, any site that has staging or uh, UAT. I believe there's a whole fray of terms that if you are having those as your subdomain, it also understands that that's a, um, a development environment, and it will allow you to be in pro mode without a license, which means you only need a license for your production server. Uh, everywhere else you enable this pro mode you get you ignore the quite frankly annoying pop-up at the bottom um, and you uh, you've got all of the features of pro mode um, we'll ignore this all to start off with we'll keep it nice and simple one of the biggest things in there is git integration uh, and user accounts um, but we'll cover those possibly part three for now we'll keep it simple so collections are your front and center for your content types. So out of the box, you will get a collection of pages. And if we edit this collection, you'll see it's settings. And what I'm looking for here is this section here, <clears throat> routing and URLs. This is the crux of how you get your content types set up. So pages by default will be sat at parent, don't touch this, <laughs> parent URI slash slug, which will enable pages to be at the root of your domain. 
So norfolkdevelopers.com forward slash this page will contain our homepage. So or this pages collection will contain our homepage. So if we go in, you can find it right here, our homepage. Yeah, exactly. You can just, uh, uh, easy, yeah, easy just to change two two lines in the config. Or I think it's just one line, isn't it? Um, yeah, just pro equals true or whatever. But like I say, we'll cover that um, when we've whizzed through all of the basic features of a CMS. Now, there isn't going to be anything that's going to blow your mind here, um, but it is all first party. Um, field sets and blueprints and stuff are fantastic. Why a parent URI rather than just pages? I, I don't follow. So within here, we're talking about the routing. Um, why parent UI and not just uh, just slug? You mean like this? It's going to take ages for you to hear that me say that because I've just looked up and we're still on the pages thing. Ah. Next time, somebody needs to remind me to put it on low, ultra low latency before I go live. That would be brilliant. Um, the reason for this is to enable nesting. Um, if parent you are you uh, are I or you don't have a parent, then it's not going to fill that in. You'll just be slash luck. However, if this page was underneath uh, another page, then it would inject that parent's URI, and that parent's URI could potentially include another parent, if that makes sense. I think, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> this is horrible. Uh, there we go. Cheers. All right, Simon. <laughs> it's like uh, answering a question and just kind of stare at the monitor for a couple of minutes while I wait for somebody to hear the answer. Right, anyway, um, we'll cover some more as factors of, of collections as we create some more. Um, but what this enable us, enables us to do, like I say, is to uh, mount pages underneath. So if we had an About Us page that for some reason we wanted to mount underneath our um, home page, then we can grab it. Oh, apparently not. I thought that's how you did it. That's how you used to do it. Maybe you need to set it in the About Us page. I think there's a parent here, yeah. So if you, wait. I'm getting confused now. Looks like it has made it underneath there. Oh yeah, because it's slash. Everything sits underneath the home page. So something will sit underneath of About Us. Sorry, getting confused now. So if we wanted to put contact us, for example, underneath about us, we can select a parent over here and say it sits under about us. There we go. And now contact us is using its parent URI uh, to form its URL. So if we go to the contact us page now, we can just tap our visit URL button over in the top right hand corner here. It is sat at about us slash contact us. And you can just keep doing that uh, as many times as you like. Um, so yeah, that's how our uh, collections work. Um, there is an option within a collection as to whether or not this is enabled. So whether or not you're allowed to nest things underneath each other. So for example, we'll be creating a posts collection. We'll also be creating a jobs collection um, and I can't to remember if there are any other collections on the website now. Oh, can't spell Norfolk for a start. Um, so yeah, we'll be creating posts, jobs, and magazines, that's the one. So these will be our three content types. And then our code of conduct and our about page and this home page itself will be within the pages collection. Okay. This is probably a terrible, terrible introduction to collections, but I think, yeah, I think 
I think we will create a collection now. Uh, I'm just struggling. There we go. Yeah, we'll do that. So we're going to create a collection now uh, to contain our posts. So this is our first content type. We need to identify, obviously, what's within a post. And we will do that with, uh, with our blueprints. So if we create our first collection, and we will call it posts. And we'll need a handle, will just be posts. You'll get brought to your introduction screen. There's no entries at the moment, so it's um, pretty simple. What we will need to do though um, is, or what we can do, is use this scaffolding option. So if we tap on uh, scaffold out resources, what we'll be presented with here is the three main resources one needs in order to display posts. So it will probably want a blueprint and we'll cover those in a minute. I'm just hard coding the roots still. What do you mean by hard coding the roots, Simon? Um, we've got an index and we've got a show. Now, I'm actually going to remove the posts index template and I will cover why at a later stage but part of the power of Statamic is the ability or what I particularly enjoy about Statamic is the ability to completely and utterly generalize your page template to the point where a single page template will load any page across the website so whether that's a collection an index of collections and we'll cover this how we set up indexes shortly um, it should be able to uh, generate um, yeah it should uh, should should do that for us um, and it will just be the one page it allows us to reduce all of the repetition um, and meet, keep the logic really really sensible uh, so Simon says I'm just hard getting the root still as in if my collection is videos my root is videos slash slug yeah that's um, yeah, that's 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 sensible. Yeah, that's for a collection. Um, and if you don't want your uh, video collection to be able to uh, sit underneath each other, then it makes perfect sense to just use slug in your in your route there. For sure, for sure. Right. So, like I say, I'm going to drop our index template, and we're just going to have our front end for our post so this is a show article template and we'll have our blueprint and we'll cover our blueprint next so we'll create our resources for this post and then if we pop into blueprints now on the left hand side here we will find we have a posts collections in here a, a, a blueprint sorry for our posts so we tap on this. This is where we establish the fields that are available to somebody who would like to write a post. So all of the fields for a post. So if we bring this side and this, this side, we can identify that obviously we have a title, we have an author, we have a hero image, and then we have content. Now, content in the world of Statamic uh, takes the form of a field called away. Well, in fact, actually, to be honest, you've got a lot of choice. Um, you could use a fair few different fields. Um, Statamic actually supports Markdown out of the box. Um, so the uh, posts can take the four. Uh, you can either use um, a field to determine your content section or um, with the likes of what we refer to as front loaded um, YAML, um, we can actually just use the content section of a markdown file. Now, I don't have any examples over here, I've just noticed. Um, 
Let me see if I can grab an example off of the Nordev website. Like so. So this here would be enough to establish a post. Uh, its title is stored within our front loaded YAML up here, and its content is just marked down underneath. Now, Statamic will support this out of the box. If you create a content field, uh, the content will be popped in the bottom there and it will be marked down. However, you have not a few other options to you, including what one of the most awesome little fields, um, and it's called the Bard field. So, what I actually have realized I need to do is set up a few um, bases for us now. And one of those is um, assets. We aren't we haven't got a, a block for our assets yet. We will ignore this for a certain amount of time. We can also ignore the author. And we, in fact, actually, I have jumped the gun a little bit too much here. What we need to do, excuse me, is we'll save this blueprint here. And let's make this a little bit bigger again. Um, panicking now about the way to present this in a, in a way that makes most sense. So we have our blueprint. I'm yeah, right. No, I'm going to do it this way. Yep. Yeah, sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm going crazy. All right. So we will create a field for our hero image. First of all, first and foremost, we every field comes with a title. So uh, oh, every blueprint, sorry, comes with a title. So we'll create our assets field here. We're going to use the assets field type. And we're going to call it our hero image. And um, this is the variable that will be used within our front loaded matter and also within our template variables. So we'll just call that hero for now. And um, we can give them some instructions. I mean, a hero image box is fairly self explanatory. Uh, we'll then get these are fairly uh, generalized. You'll get these on most fields. Um, this hidden by default option is for our index. So should it be make a field set? Yeah, do it. Yeah. <laughs> Listable shows uh, whether or not um, this column is listed on index pages. Um, we're going to hide the hero image by default. Um, we are going to select our main and only at this moment assets container. We will cover that. That was one of the things I was potentially going to jump uh, jump in the gun on. But we'll cover assets um, and how they work um, a little bit more in perhaps part two. And here is one of the least understood or one of the most confusing aspects of Statamic. The max files or max selection or multiple options that exist in fields. I am going to say that I only want one maximum file here, which is going to in turn convert this field from a array to a single entry. Now that's going to become important. It's going to be a lot easier explained when we move on to templating. But I'd just like to point out right now that if you want a single image on this, drop down to here and add max files one. And that will convert this image from being an array on the front end to being a single image on the front end. And that is quite important. Um, it affects your templating. All right, so we've got our first uh, asset here. We can add any conditions we like. So um, show when the title is empty. Um, <laughs> you can, Simon has experienced the headache that is the max files option. And you can add validation. Uh, we can say that the hero image is required. It isn't in this instance. And we can also add from a whole plethora of Laravel rules. So these are Laravel validations. If you tap the learn more button, you will be yep, taken to eight, the Laravel eight docs. Um, 
to describe all of the possible validations you can do. You can do things like MIME types, for example. So check that the image is actually a JPEG, for example. You can, um, oh, here you go, look, it even gives you an example. So JPEG is not right. I think it's, uh, it would be images. Is it image slash JPEG or something like that? Something along those lines. But you can check all sorts in here. Um, it's fantastic. Uh, apparently I can't get rid of it. Oh my. <laughs> Just uh, hit escape one too many times there. <laughs> so you get to see a free quick preview of me doing it again. So it's a hero. It's hidden by default. It's assets container and max files one. All right. We don't want any conditions or validation and we'll hit finish this time. All right, we have a hot hero image. Cool. What else do we have on our page? Well, we have an author, but again, we're just gonna ignore that for the moment and move directly into our content area here. So we are going to make use of what the, uh, what's the hammock call the Bard field. So if any of you have used Medium, you may have come across a editor like this before. Um, it's similar to perhaps Gutenberg as well in the WordPress world. Um, we are gonna call it Bard and Bard so that we know what it is. I can never think of a good name for this, but what I will tell you now is you can't call it content because of course the content is a reserved word within Statamic. It is for this block here underneath. So don't ever call any of your fields content. It's quite annoying because it's quite one of, <laughs> quite often want to call this bar, my bar field a content field. But in the end, I have just fairly routinely just called it a bar. Um, and what we are going to show you um, is how you can share this same bar field between all of your content types if you desire. Again, we're going to keep it hidden by default. We aren't going to add any sets to start off with, but we'll cover these again in a moment. What we're going to concentrate is on buttons. So the Bard field is a WYSIWYG. It is a WYSIWYG with a little bit of a difference. Out of the box, without any sets, it is a WYSIWYG. We get to pick which buttons we'd like available on our WYSIWYG. And if there is an, if, sorry, if there's a button that you require, you can fairly easily and routinely add a button um, to this. It's within the documentation, probably won't cover that in this uh, journey through Satamic unless I'm really desperate for something at the end. Um, there is a bunch of options in here. Um, I'm not gonna cover them all. Um, this is quite handy, so, and the little medium feature. Um, whether or not you want your links to to have target blank or rel no opener or any of that fixed to it, whether or not you want your toolbar to be fixed or floating so it floats around and follows you down the page. We'll just keep it fixed for now. Sorry, my phone's going crazy. Yeah, okay, it's all good, right. Um, so yeah, this is our WYSIWYG field out of the box and we're going to use it as a WYSIWYG field to start with. So we'll save this. And I think this is pretty much us there. Minus our um, author and minus our taxonomy, our categories or tags. We are there, I believe. This is all we'll need for our um, posts collection. So we'll save this. Oh yeah, gets me every time. Saved pop up on the bottom left hand corner. I just sit here and I don't do anything. It's a bit annoying. Anyway, right. Let's get into some templating now. So we created a post collection and we configured a, or we asked it to generate as part of the um, scaffolding, we asked it to generate as a post slash show template. So over to Sublime, over to our resources directory, which is 
the same as the resources directory in Laravel into our views folder and we will find our posts folder and a show.antlers.html file. This is the template for a single post. We've got a default home and a layout file here. We'll ignore those for, for now. And we're just going to come into our show.antlers.html file. This is antlers.html. It is the antlers templating language. If you wish, you can use blade. Um, just come in here, rename your extensions, blade.php, and it will start using blade as your templating language rather than antlers. Now, antlers is geared up specifically for Stratamic, so it includes a load of helpers, um, and it kind of makes a lot of sense within the Stratamic world. But as far as I'm aware, there's nothing you can't do in Blade that you can do in Antlers. It might just look a little bit uglier in the Blade land um, because it's been, uh, you've got some helpers basically in Antlers land. So one of the super, super helpful features of Antlers, everything goes inside of our uh, wiggly braces. We can use the dump command function to dump the current context. So if we now create our first entry and we give it a title of hello world obviously we can see our slug is being auto-generated. Uh, if we want to change that we can. Um, we will add a hero image uh oh, <laughs> go to my uh. Um, let's pop this one on it. Excellent, and we'll pick that as our image for our hero. Excellent, and now hello Bard. So you can see, looks pretty much like a standard WYSIWYG, right? We'll grab some Lorem Ipsum. Copy those, and we'll pop that into our content field. There we go. Did I paste that somewhere else? Mm -hmm. Awesome. You can also uh, full screen this if you like. Um, quite nice. And obviously you've got all of our WYSIWYG field, or you know, classic WYSIWYG. It's got bold, it's got italics, you know. You know how it is. Um, I think you can show HTML source, but you can't edit it. Yeah. Uh, cool. So if we now save and publish this, our visit URL option just appeared because it's now a fully fledged post. If we click our view button now, hopefully it's not going to work. Exactly. Right. So this is where we come here to uh, Simon's suggestion earlier with regards to roots. It's out of the box. This collection doesn't have a root. So the view link is not working. It's a little annoying that it's available to be quite frank. Um, but if we come into our edit collection now, we get presented with all of the options we saw under pages. We can see that our blueprint is currently selected as posts. We can see that we don't have any taxonomies. We can see that we've got that post slash slash posts slash show template. Blimey, why is that so difficult to say? And we've got a blank root. So all we need to do is uh, potentially come in here and add this root. However, there is a slightly different way of doing it if you so wished. What you can do instead is mount your uh, content. So if we come into our pages and we create a page to hold our content and obviously, well not obviously, but it is going to be called our posts page. It's going to hold our posts and this will do for now. We will save and publish that page. Now, if we come on to the dots on the right here, oh, all right, tell a lie. You can't do it from there. You used to be able to do it from there. If we come into uh, posts again, 
pop it to edit collection and scroll down if we add a mount it'll allow us to pick something to mount it upon so we'll mount it upon our posts page now if we hit save and we go back to our pages you'll see that posts suddenly has an add and an edit button and this is because it is aware that the posts have been mounted here now this used to work a little bit differently in version 2 land this all used to be set up from a pages context and in fact actually pages never used to be collections they used to just be pages um, this has changed a little bit um, and there is the last time I tried this there was a slight bug so the posts are now mounted on this posts page and within the template we should be able to get them so within our page template we should be able to list whatever is mounted on our page which will present or which will get us our um, our URL because it will be based on the page it is mounted on so that allows us to kind of move it around if we wished um, at our heart's content what we will need to do though is we will need to give it a URL still and we'll just need to tell it that it is by, based on its mount so if we come into posts and edit again and come into here come down to our root just above our mount and tell it that it now needs to generate a root as mount slash slug and this will ensure that it follows the posts page around and that its URLs match that. So now if we go back to our posts and we click view with some luck, it's actually going to take us, yay, to posts slash hello world and not the home page. And what we've been presented here is a dump. Now this I'm pretty sure it's the same. Yeah, it's, it's the Laravel dump. So it has uh, dumped to us, dumped to the page, all of the variables that are available to our template at the moment. And what we'll begin to see in here is things like our barred field is contained here. We can see our title is contained here. We've got our slug. And anything else, to be honest. But, excuse me. Oh, anything else that's uh, been added to our collection or added to our blueprints will appear here. So we can begin to build out our posts page, if we like, off the back of that. So we can say, instead of dump, we'll put our title on the page. And we will put... Uh, what are the other variables we had? Uh, our slug we don't need, our title. We've got a barred field in here somewhere. Here it is. So we'll dump out our barred field. Now, this is where stuff begins. This is where I'm kind of, this is where Simon was speaking earlier about the max file stuff. This is where it you can easily get caught out. So the barred, I should be able to echo out just like this. Statamic knows how to, or Statamic will render it to HTML and we'll just drop drop it on the page as HTML. So if we now save this back to our posts, hello world, we get, oh, ah. <laughs> this has caught me out before. <laughs> uh, we will fix this in a moment. Um, <laughs> Let's fix it now. <laughs> the layout file over here has got flex in it. <laughs> I don't know why. Anyway, we are going to rip out uh, this uh, div here. 
and we're going to strip down our layout file. Now this is the layout file that's used pretty much, well it will be used on every page unless of course you change it. So you can add more layouts, um, you could have like a landing page layout if you wanted to kind of a strimmed down version of your page. Um, and you can provide the user with a, a layout feed. I think there is one already on pages. So if we come into pages and click on our home page, I think out of the box, the la no, it's a template field, beg your pardon. You can add a layout field as well within there uh, so that somebody could change the layout of the page and have a kind of a, a landing page, something, you know, when they kind of strim down your navigation, this, that, and the other. Oh my word, I've just spotted how behind you are on the screen <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um cool so we'll get rid of our flex stuff in there and now with some luck we're going to get a very boring yeah very plain page but what we do have here is our html for our bard so if we go back to our posts we're going to make use of a live preview so if you come into hello world now on the right hand side you should have a live preview button and you get a live preview of your page quite obviously so you can start editing content down and seeing how it looks in context however we are going to update this bard and we're going to introduce one of its awesome features and that was as we touched upon the sets feature also to remember the image but we'll do the image next right so if we come into our blueprints and we come into posts again and we open up our bard we touched upon the sets and i said that i wasn't going to add any at the moment we will now add a set now it's quite difficult to describe these to be honest um, they are blocks, what I like to refer to as blocks. So, if we take a look at um, one of these pages, what's a good page to take a look at? Um, to be honest, this website's fairly routine. There isn't much special stuff going on, really. Um, I think of a site off the top of my head except for one site that I looked at yesterday. I don't think it's appropriate to look at it again. Um, in fact, it totally is. The wonderful people over at User Story. If you haven't met these people, meet them, employ them to make your website better, your software better. They are also our first sponsor. Thank you very much. Anyway, so when I find my mouse, oh, lost my mouse. Um, if we take a look at some of that page, uh, not this page, let's take a look at the About Us page, for example. Got a content section here. It's very much made up of blocks, right? Um, what we do is possibly a good page. Here we go. Got these blocks and they're all fairly similar they follow a, a, a layout right it's got a headline it's got a tagline or a, a substrap and it's got an image and a background color and that goes on and you could also consider these potentially potentially to be a, a similar block as well all right and then another one here we've got like a footer block now you could add these to every page, or you could add some field sets to your page to say what these blocks should be, or you can go at it from a um, set angle. So what we can come in here and do is add, for example, a uh, full width, uh, mar I don't know, uh, marketing section, <laughs> terrible name for it. What we could come in here and do is uh, add fields to that particular set. So we can say that we want some text. It's going to be the headline. 
and we will actually show by default and I'll show you how that we'll see how that takes effect so usually this would affect a index page for a field this still affects the index page of the field but it actually for the little block that appears within the play uh, with sorry reading this uh, um, that appears within the bard it will all come to uh, come clear uh, as we come to it again we can add some conditions so we can actually say that this headline is required and then we can add another field to our headline and we will say where is it a text area and we'll say a substract and we will actually hide that by default um, I don't think we need a character limit and I don't think we need to make it required in this instance either they don't have to put a substract in and then of course we'll need our assets field and again um, we're going to probably make this a maximum of one we only want them to add one potentially um, although and the option to add several appears below on this this one so who knows so maybe we allow them to add multiples um, image <laughs> images <laughs> and again we'll pick an asset container we'll go over these um, and how you can use them to uh, Kind of restrict and allow people to um, have a me uh, like basically segment the media library up and, and have some control over where and how somebody can kind of reuse an image. And um, we're going to call. We're going to say that's required. All right. Now, for example, we could potentially have like a gallery. So you want to you've got an article, and you want to add you know, a, a set of images to it in the middle that you can uh, that you can pan through. This is the, the kitty for that. So we'll just um, allow them to add some pictures. Or oh, images might be a better word. We will say what container, and again, we're just gonna go for that root, uh, the only container we've got. There is no max files in this instance. They can upload as many as they like, um, but it is required, and that makes this field required when you add that set all right so if we now finish those are some fairly basic examples of some barred sets that we've got and we'll save this new blueprint and we'll go back to our posts now if we come into our hello world nothing much has changed we've got our WYSIWYG still all right However, if we come in here, tap enter, get ourselves a new line, you're going to notice we've got a little plus button. And if we hit the plus button, lo and behold, we've got our sets. So we can now drop in our set and just tidy that up. Um, it does that. I don't know. I'm, I'm mixed mixed mind on the way it adds new lines above and beyond. But, but yeah, anyway. We'll call it headline, substrap. And we've already uploaded uh, this image, so we'll just grab that again from our assets container. Excellent. That's our full width marketing section. I'm going to delete this here. Save and publish. All right. So we'll go back to our Hello World page where we had our title and we had our barred field. Yeah. And we'll refresh. We've got a title. Wow. And this is the first introduction to kind of these dynamic style of tags. So as they are here, they are expecting a single value. Right? They're going to take whatever's defined in Bard and they're going to use a transformer to transform it into a single value. Now when that Bard field doesn't have any sets, it's quite easy. To translate the bard into a single item it just needs HTML but when you've added sets all of a sudden Satamic no longer knows how to render your uh, render your bard so it will leave it down to you at this point we need to now start treating the bard as an array and we can simply do that by a starting bard and an end bard with our slash here and this will loop over an array called bard. And now if we dump 
just as we were doing earlier, inside of our bard, we are going to get each item in our bard dumped out. And what we're looking for in here, first of all, is a type. Each entry, each set in the bard will have a type. When it is the standard WYSIWYG type, or is sorry, standard WYSIWYG text, it will just be text. And it will have a textual value that will have our HTML contained within p tags look already all wrapped and ready for us to go. This second section is going to be of type full width marketing section, which looks ridiculous. <laughs> and again, it will have our values that were defined on that set. So, oops. So we have a headline, we have a substrap, and we have some images. All right. And then we move into the text again. So type text and the rest of the text on that in that bard um, is now in here. Click this, boom, there's all of our HTML for the rest of the page. Okay, now this is where we first move into the world of partials. Um, specifically for our bard here, we're going to use that type variable to load a partial that matches it and is able to load it. So as we loop over our bard, we're going to use the partial tag and pass it a partial to load from source. So we're going to say that this partial is a, uh, a bard yeah, slash sets slash, and then we're gonna use single braces here because we're inside some insider tag to interpolate our value of type like so we hit save and we come out to here we're going to get an error view bard sets text not found so we now know that at least it's trying to load the right view we just need to create that view so that we can render it. Now, partials are just like partials in Blade, Laravel world. You need to open, uh, create a new folder within your views called partials, and then you just need to match your source. So we're looking to create a new file. It's going to be bard sets type, and that will be text handlers HTML. So we now should have a bard sets text. Okay. If we come over here now and refresh, it's now going to complain about the full width marketing section. So we'll make one of those. New sets, full width marketing section, antlers .html. Refresh. It's loaded, but it's blank. It's loaded up both of our partials that we, we want. But obviously we haven't filled them with any details at the moment. So within our text one, let's just output our text. And within our full width marketing section, let's introduce a, a, a basic div to hold all of this information. And we will print out our headline. Oops. Our headline. Uh, does anyone remember what else was defined on this? Some assets, I believe, and a substrap. I'm leaving out assets for now because um, I want to cover those as one full chunk. So we now have both of our sets defined. We've got a text set, we've got a full width marketing section. So now if we refresh, bingo bango, we have our first set here is our text set. We've got our headline and substrap that have been injected from, um, from our marketing thing. And then we've got the continuation of our textual area. Didn't miss it. <laughs> you mean the, 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 the stream in general, Chris? <laughs> well, did I ask anyone if they missed anything? <laughs> <clears throat> hey, Chris. Um, hopefully, 
that very simple demonstration there, you, you can see the power in that, right? You can see that as soon as you, your client comes to you and says, I need a block on my articles that talks about the latest advancements in the product. It looks like this, it's got this, this and this. It perhaps has a little headline and should link out to a button. A button should link out to a, to a site or something. As soon as somebody comes to, comes to you and says that, you drop in a new set within your BARD and you create a template in your BARD set folder. Yes, the stream in general. Hey, have you only just got up, Chris? Is this is this wake up o'clock? This feels like a wake up time for you, half one. Blimey, half one. We only got half an hour left. I thought I was gonna get through loads. <laughs> just been babbling on incoherently about the uh, about this. Right. Now, we created partials barred sets. We're going to do one more layer of abstraction, and that is to create an index file inside of our BARD, antlers.html, and within here, we're going to output BARD, and then we're going to output a section, and then we're going to output, we can probably copy it at this point, from our show, our partial. end our section and end the loop on the BART. All right, so that just allows us to uh, move uh, the looping into one place, right? So that we can call that in anywhere. And now we can, instead of looping over our BART, refer to our new partial that as it's been stored in BART slash index. Now, I've used the source attribute, the source parameter, to pass in bard slash index. But in this instance, um, it was suddenly half past one, so it's <laughs> uh, that sometimes just happens. Yeah, that, that that definitely happens to me all the bloody time. You know, at times I'll just like get zoned in and then just be like, Ooh, and look at the clock. Yeah, I basically didn't I didn't do any work this morning because couldn't risk it. Anyway. So we used the source attribute and we injected a variable, right, with a single set of um, handlebars. Um, if you don't need to do that, you can use a slightly shorter version of it. Pop a colon on the end. Bish bash bosh. Now you can refer to them as well, I think, as bar dot uh, or bar slash. Doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't care. Let me refresh now. <coughs> My favorite thing to do, refresh and see no changes whatsoever. That's brilliant. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> oh, God, sorry. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I nearly muted, but then I realized I don't have a... Uh, could have muted on here. There you go. Save you from my coughs. Quick swing. Half an hour to go. All right. Now, <clears throat> another abstraction incoming. The barred field, as I said to you earlier, I like to aim to make the templates as general as possible. <laughs> Sean's a bard in our um, in our D and D group, and we've yet to convince him to play play one of his many guitars. Um, Druid next week. What after that? Says Chris. Um, wizardry. We're going to be doing wizardry the entire time. It is one massive experiment in wizardry. Okay. The bard field. The bard field will belong to posts, it will belong to pages, we'll probably want a bard field on every content type. And we do not want to configure it in every single place, especially if we're referring to uh, a partial that is set up to only um, load a particular layout and particular sets and stuff, so we want to make that 
as general as possible and we don't want to repeat ourselves it's the, one of my key mantras in my in programming life so we can use field sets in order to do that so what we can take is we can take our bard from our blueprint extract it pop it in a field set and then we can include that field set inside of our posts and inside of our pages and eventually inside of any other content type that deserves some content and we will touch upon this is a great time to touch upon the yaml nature of everything that we have done so far so none of this is in a data well it's in a database that database happens to be your hard drive um, your folders um, and that content is all stored in yaml and markdown and we're about to see how that works so if we create a field set we're going to get the same type of interface the only difference, we don't have multiple panels. What I've just realized is I didn't touch upon those multiple panels in the other uh, blueprint, so we will. At the moment, we don't have any fields in here. That's fine, let's save it. Okay, so we now have a barred field set and a blueprint with a barred on it. Let's merge the two, or rather let's move one to the other. So if we come into our blueprints within our resources folder and we come into collections and into posts and then posts.yaml, this is the definition for our blueprint for our posts. These are all of our fields. We've got our title field, all of its options. We've got a hero field with all of its options. And hello, we have a bard field. So going to take from that dot there from the uh, list I'm going to scroll and we're going to take all of this to the end I'm going to cut it out all right neaten that up a bit brilliant posts no longer has a bard on it we will go to our field set we will open our bard.yaml which is what we've just created and we're going to remove these uh, empty braces. It's just because the fields were empty. Um, it renders it with the brace. I don't know. I'm not too sure why. I guess that's a YAML thing. We can then paste in our fields from our bard and we can just correct the indentation a little bit. It was obviously indented uh, slightly deeper in the um, blueprint. So we'll just tab that down once, twice, nearly sang three times a hero save that and with some luck as long as I haven't done it incorrectly if I refresh this blueprint field set now we have a bard appeared and within our bard we can see our full width marketing section and our gallery still perfect finish that back into field sets oh actually back into blueprints back into posts we can see our bard has disappeared from our uh, posts blueprint. So we can use this link existing item. We can link to a field set and we will pick bard. This prefix here is to prefix every field, as it says, in the linked field set. So if you had um, a field set that was warranted repeating, um, you could repeat it and then prefix every every field that's within it. So say you wanted a, bar, a content field for two sections. You wanted um, you wanted two bards on this particular page. We could prefix all of it with, I don't know, um, the other underscore bard. <laughs> um, and then as it comes through, as you would see in the dump, you see all of those fields uh, prepended with other underscore instead. So that would be other, un other, other underscore bard. Instead, we're just going to link this naturally in, which will mean it will get rid of the top layer of bard and it will just be the fields that are defined in there. So immediately we're just going to get our bard back again. So if we hit save, 
that annoys me every time. They really need to put something up in this top right hand corner. Because bottom, literal the opposite side of the page to say, yeah, I did that, is not cool. Anyway, moving on. Um, if we come into our posts now, and we look at Hello World, it's not going to worry, it's not going to... Yeah, there we go, perfect. It's all still there, all still configured. If we visit the URL, which we already had up, it's all still working. Excellent. But we've abstracted now two things into a fairly general general morphological general way. So what that means is we can come into our pages blueprint. Take this content field and throw it away. We will instead link to an existing field set barred go. And we're gonna just drag that up to be in the same place at the same time as we're doing that. I'm just going to remove the template field and I'm also going to remove the author field. And we're going to hit save. Quick note while we're here, I mentioned it a moment ago. I mentioned it while we jumped onto the field sets. Sections. Blueprints have sections, field sets do not. The sections sidebar is predefined. You can delete it and would you know, you'll lose a sidebar. You won't have a sidebar anymore. Um, you can create new sections and they will appear as tabs. So you can have a, a tabbed set of fields inside of your content. Um, and if you like, get rid of the sidebar completely or put fields in the sidebar if you like. Um, I tend to put the taxonomical, tax, taxonomical, 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 taxonomical in there. Right, cool. I'm gonna hit save. Perfect. We've got 20 minutes. I just want to cover the fact that we've mounted on this posts page. Now, the last time I tried, I'm pretty sure this was broken. So unfortunately, this is one of those little workarounds I'm about to introduce to you. And this workaround will um, basically replicate some of the v version two uh, functionality of Statanic back into version three. So we talked about mounts and how you can mount um, posts or mount any collection onto one of your pages or one of your posts for that matter. Um, once this happens, you would then use your template to output. Wish this was Twitch, could clip that. Huh. <laughs> Which, what? I'm not even gonna, I don't even know, I don't even want to know, Chris, what you'd clip. Um, once once you've established that, there are these add and edit buttons. Now, there should be a way to detect that from the context of the page. And unfortunately, touch word, so far, I have not been able to do that. Now, I don't know if this is a bug or what it is really, but it just does not seem to work. So what I tend to do is reintroduce a version two feature. And this is a little bit, a little bit hacky, but it's a nice tip, a nice hint to get uh, back to a fairly generalized world. So if we come into pages, come into our posts, and in our front matter, our YAML at the top, I'm gonna add mount, colon, oops, colon, posts. That's all we need. And that will allow me in the template to discover that this post page has a mount on it. There does not seem to be any other way. I believe you should be able to use, we will find it, um, we were using it later within taxonomies actually, but we'll, we should be able to use an entries tag to get those entries out. But as far as I've played with it uh, a couple of months ago, or whatever it was, that does not work. Uh, I mean, it might be fixed, I, don't know. I haven't kept abreast enough, I'm afraid. Um, so yeah, if you know that that happens to be counter to that, please do share it in chat. All right, so we're now going to enable um, every other page on the website. And in order to do that, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to delete this home page template. I do not like page templates. <laughs> And when I say that, what I mean, this is a, an opinion coming out now. 
I don't like people being able to change the post a uh, page via a template. It should always be this default template, in my opinion. Um, you should be able to change the layout, so you should be able to change the navigation. You should be able to trim that down, have just a, a just your logo or something along those lines. But when it comes to the actual template of the page itself, it should be in my opinion, generic enough that you should be able to create any page from a page, from your BART, right? That might be a fairly controversial opinion, but so far, touch wood, I've been able to basically generalize most websites down to a single template um, and a configuration of block elements. Um, so let's do that. In our default template, we've just got a content field at the moment. And we're going to flip that out for a dump field. Uh, dump uh, function and pop across to our page. So we'll, we'll uh, there's no view button. Does that do view? No. Oh, well. dump. Excellent. What I will quickly do as well is I've deleted the home template here. I need to come into pages, come into home, tell it is no longer the template home because. That's one of my pet hates, actually. Home templates. Anyway, by, by, by all means, agree to disagree in the chat, but yeah, I'm a big fan of just pages. Um, cool. We can see we have a bar that is null. We can see we have somewhere in here. Huh, where's it gone? Are we on posts it doesn't have content it might just be because we don't have content or if they change this as well now huh looks like they might have changed that excuse me Huh. So you probably have to have a content field in order to actually render the content now? I could have sworn that wasn't the case before. Okay, okay, that's good to know. Um, right, we've got a page. <clears throat> that doesn't work. We'll cover that at some point. Okay, we've got a dump. What we'd like to do here... Oh, hello, blimey, that's a big old... So Chris says, fair enough. I think I used to have generic components blocks which could be configured, ordered really flexibly, but then have a number of templates which basically act as toggled to enable disposable. Some of those components blocks from being used given the template. So it wasn't possible to infinitely create anything from one template. The possible I have a lot of flexibility within the sum design. Yeah, okay, some designs constraints. Yeah. I mean, like I say, Take it with a pinch of salt. Um, I'm, I might be a completely fallacious. Um, there is a couple of instances where I've created a custom template for a particular page, but that has usually been, yeah, it's been very rare. Most of the time I like to proceed of the opinion that basically the page should be configurable. So if you want like a dark page or something or a background for the entire page, then um, allow people to set a background on any page. And then if they only ever use that on one page, that's fine. But it should be as much as possible configurable from that top level, just a page with a default template. And that's all what we're going to do now. So again, we're not got any styles coming in. We'll perhaps introduce some of those next week. Um, we will output the title of the page we will output the bard. Also, don't know whether you have to do dot index. Quite just curious to see if it'll automatically pick up slash index. You might need a slash. To, I don't know. Anyway, um, and then we're going to check if mount. So if this page has been mounted. Um, then we will want to display the entries from that, all right? 
And again, I'm probably going to pass this through to a partial. But for now, we will use. Um, I should have probably. I mean, I've been using these tags, and I've not really um, touched upon them really. So let's uh, take a quick look. And there's templates and tags here. And if you tap on his, you should get, there we go, a list of all of the tags that are available. So the dump tag, for example, just here, the one that I've been using to dump out um, information, dump out the current context. Um, the dump is very handy for dealing with something we call the cascade, something that we will touch upon again in next week's um, episode. Um, the cascade is one of those gotchas in the Stotamic world, um, and we will cover that in depth next week. Um, but for now, I'm trying to keep things fairly simple. So, while we're going here, we are to go and have a look at the collections tag. And here we can find the tag for basically pulling out content from or entries from a particular collection um, you can do all sorts of where logic and you can do taxonomy stuff again looking at the time we've got 15 minutes left we will cover taxonomy is probably first thing um, in episode two all right so let's paste in the uh, the content we got from there uh, so that sets up a UL. I actually prefer to use OL because it is actually an ordered list. Um, and we're going to from blog. Nope. We're going to do it. Um, there's two ways of doing this as well. Uh, we're going to take it from mount. Um, now you can either do it like that to pass in the mount variable. Because we're only passing in a mount variable, we can use colon from, which tells it it should bind it. And in here, we give it the variable. So bind it to mount, like so. It's just a nice, simpler way of doing that. Um, you should be able to just do colon mount as well. No, because it's, yeah, don't, don't worry. So collection from mount. And we'll have our it print out a little list for each entry, uh, a href with the URL, a title field, a, and then we'll end our li. Perfect. So now when we go to our posts page, we have our hello world post. Tap through to that. We're beginning to get a website together. Nice. If we just add a second post now. both excellent excellent what we will do inside of here though is again we have a little look at the values that we're getting out and what we should be able to see here is we've got yep yeah, our two dumps and they should have yeah we've got a mount from the past so this is where we're beginning to see some of that cascade going on right um, that mount variable is available at a page level, but we're now within the loop and we're still seeing that mount. So this is something to be aware of basically, and it specifically is a pain when you're dealing with the title variable because everything's got a title until it hasn't got a title, and then you suddenly get the page title in a loop. So just be aware of that. There are ways to handle it. There is stuff um, you can use um, scoping to basically uh, ensure that only a certain amount of variables available or the variables that you're passing through but we will like I say cover that next week <laughs> so what we're going to do in here is we're going to use another partial we're going to say partial source and this time we're going to say um, preview slash oh actually hang on we probably want, no, we don't want, uh, we want mount slash preview. 
and then it's going to warn us that we do not have a posts preview yet. So we're going to come into our partials, uh, partials directory. We're going to create a new folder called, uh, let's just go straight for a file. New file is going to be in a posts directory and it's going to call preview to antlers.html. And in this little bad boy, we want all of the content that we just had in here, all right? So we want to grab that, pop it in there. Bish, bash, bosh, chops a kitten. We will we do all of this, pop that back. Excellent. And again, we have refactored it. We've uh, using another partial. And this time, if we ever want to preview or display a um, post, we can just use our posts preview partial. And if we ever want to update it in the hundreds of places that it's been pulled in, we can again just edit it in one place. The importance of the partials, everything in a partial as much as possible. And there's another rule as well I like to follow is um, no layout in um, partials either. So the layout should be defined at this level and the partial should just fill whatever space it's been given. So if I wanted uh, three up on this particular page, um, I can do that at this point, not at, um, sorry, class. Uh, I can do it at this point by just saying class uh, and then width one third, for example. Um, and in this partial is everything is a width 100%. It's, it's filling that thing up. Um, yeah. I guess this wasn't meant to be an uh, introduction to how Alex builds websites. This is meant to be static websites, but it kind of goes hand in hand, unfortunately. Okay. So we have all of that set up now. We've got a basic default page. Um, now this will allow us to do things like, for example, come to our pages. We've got a page that's got our posts on it. We can of course, add more detail to it. So uh, thanks for reading our posts. Submit your own on GitHub. Like so. And then what will happen is on our post page, we're actually going to get some content before our uh, for our list. All right. Now, it obviously looks very ugly, but this is where we start, right? This is where we, uh, um, yeah, this is where we start. We need to build it up like this. All right. Trying to think. This is probably, I'm not going to be able to get anything done in the next seven minutes. Um, so next week, we will cover taxonomies. Um, the enabling of categories and stuff like that, or particularly within the Nor Norfolk Developers website tags. So, um, everything, everything's got the tags. I've got the event tag. So you can see a listing of um, posts about events and posts about the like, article one's probably quite bigger. Okay. Um, so we need to be uh, to implement uh, taxonomies and we'll need to implement a much nicer version of this page right this is the uh, this post index page we've got here it's a bit ugly isn't it but things like pagination will need to be introduced and stuff like that so um, next week we will um, crack on with some taxonomies we will create our tag category or tags um, and then we'll show you how to associate a collection with a tag um, and then some of the free uh, routing that you get out of the box on that one as well. Um, and there is some um, gotchas in that as well um, that uh, aren't immediately obvious. So, um, yeah, hopefully that will be helpful. We'll cover some of those. Um, th week three, we'll probably be looking to um, introduce uh, a bunch of the styling. Uh, so that will be the one that Chris can most definitely skip because it will be Tailwind, unfortunately. Um, and then week four, we will be looking at custom stuff. Um, and that's where Stamic really comes into its own. Um, so there is on the Nordev homepage, 
Um, we've got this meetup block here uh, that is going off to <laughs> the meetup API uh, and grabbing the events from there um, and displaying them on here. Now that's a fairly custom um, jobby. So we'll be creating our own custom tag. So just as we've got our uh, partial tag or our collection tag, we'll create our own called meetup um, and we'll use that to uh, to go and grab our data for us. Um, got to learn some Tailwind, got to love some Tailwind, I think uh, is the word you're looking for, Chris, but yeah. <laughs> Um, this time, hopefully, uh, okay with everyone. Obviously, it'll be Wednesday next week, um, not Friday. Um, it's been a bit of a, uh, a crazy week um, this week for everyone. Um, so uh, we figured we'd push it past um, the, November the 5th and uh, the US elections. Um, there was also some controversy in the Statamic world. Um, we're a fairly apolitical organization over here at Norfolk Developers, so we um, tend not to get involved in those sorts of conversations, but we thought we'd be uh, best off just uh, waiting a couple of days before uh, before approaching this, uh, this live stream today. But um, thanks for joining us. Um, if there's any questions, uh, now is the time. Otherwise, Hopefully that was helpful and we shall see you back Wednesday, 12 o'clock. Again, if that's helpful, unless you want me to go earlier at the earlier time of eight or we can do five o'clock. I don't mind either way. Um, I just need to move my day around. So uh, apolitical, yeah, Norfolk developers are apolitical. Chris, we don't get involved in those conversations. Go blue team, says Chris. Go any team. All right, so uh, yeah, thanks. Like I say, thanks for joining us. Uh, cheers, Simon, thank you. Thank you to Chris. Thank you to Rich and Sean. Don't think of, oh, we had a message. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna butcher this name, Maladen. I'm imagining, good afternoon, Maladen. Um, yeah, good afternoon to you all. Have a great one, have a great weekend, don't forget, Virtual Social Club this evening as well. Norfolk Developers Virtual Social Club. Um, you know, physically distanced, not socially distanced. Pop along, 5.30 till ridiculously late. On the Zooms, details are all over the place. Join the Discords, etc, etc. Adios, Sean. Adios, Richard. I shall leave you with our Patreon slide for the fabulous people that keep us running. Um, a quick shout out as well this week. Um, the user story, the marvellous people at the user story are uh, now sponsoring our Discord, sponsoring the quarterly prizes and keeping uh, helping keep Norfolk developers afloat. Um, yes, uh, I'd rather not get any more text from Barclays telling us we're overdrawn, so that would be great. But anyway, I will leave you with our Patreon page. If this has been useful and you'd like to see it continue, um, please do uh, pop along to Patreon. And again, my thanks to everyone who has already uh, donated um, to, to the cause. All right, yeah. <laughs> toodles, toodles. <laughs> Bye.